Hey, this is Susan Blanton with the Create Happy Now podcast, and I have a special guest that I have been wanting to have on my show for quite some time now. His name is John Stringer. I met John at a Set the Tone concert event, and he was a speaker and performer. He also had a book for sale, which I made a beeline to go get and met with him briefly after the show, and I knew I wanted to have him on my show. He just has an amazing um, resume of things that he has done uh, musically and uh, spiritually, and I, I just have to get started on this, so bear with me. Um, because it's definitely worth uh, hearing what he has been doing. Um, John Stringer is a life teacher, a speaker, a billboard chart singer, songwriter, healer, and author with a passion for music, community, and limitless love and light. He teaches others how to access genius through a spiritual path, creative path, or intuitive path, and is the founder of Polly Platt Records, a partner at Healing Arts Management and ConsciousSongwritingRetreat.com, co-host of Awakened Pillow Talk podcast, co-founder of MasterMomentMakers.com, and a true collaboration leader at BandingPeopleTogether.com, whose clients include leaders at Netflix, Focus Brands, Home Depot, Cisco, Microsoft, NASA, ESPN, SunTrust, and many more. He now travels extensively, making appearances at concerts, colleges, workshops, spiritual centers, churches, conferences, retreats, festivals, and more globally. He shares his message of healing through songs featured on his debut solo album, Limitless Love and Light, featuring the Posey Award-nominated song, That's Love, and his follow-up album, Moment to Moment Live. He also shares inspired teachings with his audience, some of which can be found in his new book, The Abundance Vibration, A Guide to Alignment. His songs are currently being used as a theme music for the Canadian Institute for Natural Integrative Medicine, Life University, the City of Hapeville, DrawChange.org, Special Needs Certified, Orlando Pranic Healing Centers, and other amazing organizations spreading love in their own way. Welcome to the Create Happy Now podcast, dedicated to helping you start your journey to discover true happiness. Join me, your host, Susan Blanton, weekly as we explore the transformation stories and words of wisdom from our Masters of Happiness with tips you can start applying today to create happy now. I have on my show today, John Stringer. Thank What's you so up? much. What's <laughs> up? So glad to have you. Grateful we, to be here. We met at uh, Set the Tone. I bought your book and I stood in line to talk to you. And here you are. <laughs> so grateful. Thank you for having me. Love the energy. Love talking to you leading up to it. So I know it's going to be fun. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. So what uh, my listeners would like to know is a little bit about you, you know, your story. Um, I mentioned a little few things about you at the beginning, but you want to dig a little deeper and know like what you're made of. I'm going to tell you some things I don't think I've ever shared actually, because it just Whoa. came. From me. All right. Um, Juicy. <laughs> so I was, I was actually born premature, three months premature in a very tumultuous, like emergency rush to the hospital my dad driving for miles knoxville to, to knoxville tennessee a police escort is what i understand and so it was all this turmoil wow my mom had to be operated on c-section to get me out and i i was so small they put me in the incubator and all that good stuff right so that was the story i grew up learning as a child and i was born on march 15th the ides of march so i thought all that was kind of fascinating right so so being born uh, on the ides of march having this tumultuous birthday, all these things I'm told. And then I was named after my father and my grandfather. So I was born John Hamilton String in the fourth. Okay. Uh, so I had all these interesting things I was being taught growing up. My dad wasn't around from three on. Okay. Um, so there was this contrasting of uh, my mom really invested a lot of time in 
building my confidence, kind of investing the story of how I was born and all this in my mind, I begin to have this perception of, wow, I, I'm really blessed in one way. And then on the other hand, there's this perception of, but I want my dad back. Yeah. <laughs> my dad is gone. So that wonderful contrast, my mom was loving and uh, made sure we had everything we need, worked hard, many jobs, put us through private schools. Uh, I even got kicked out and got to go back to a private school. <laughs> <laughs> I was a, a pretty uh, wild child and turned things around. But what was fascinating to me was that contrast growing up of, um, on one hand, having my mom pour so much uh, to instill faith and value and self-confidence and then me battling with this lack idea because my father wasn't around. So that was a big part of my life, right? Mm -hmm. That struck that challenge. And I, I would use prayer and my faith and religion to try to pray my dad back into my life. Didn't work. <laughs> so mm -hmm. by the time I was in high school, I had given up on prayer, God, and all this other stuff, you know, as far as getting my dad back. But um, I, I still didn't, things didn't quite click yet. So it did give me that contrast gave me this strong desire to find God because I was taught in religion as God, as the father. Mm -hmm. So this concept of God I had was this wonderful father that either is going to get pissed at you <laughs> or bless you. Right. Right. <laughs> so, you know, I had the fear and the love thing going. And so all this wonderful contrast uh, led me to a life of aspiring to be what I was learning in religion and not ever getting there <laughs> like aspiring for this goal but but kind of knowing it's not quite possible but at the same time feeling a lot of guilt because i wasn't there you know it's just this battle and a did lot you, of so did you feel there. like you had a block or was it just the block was or, or do you think it was the 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 the, the information that you were learning just hadn't completely aligned with you or that just wasn't resonating with you good question the block was a misperception, but that misperception mm -hmm. was being passed down from, to, like I was receiving the same misperception from mm -hmm. others and, and taking that misperception forward. Uh, to give you an example, it's like um, looking at the, I was being taught what Christ-like meant and to be like Christ, but also taught that I'm not capable of it. And that uh, that example is something very separate than what I could ever be. And that only grace will allow me to be worthy of ever feeling like I could, you know, even relate to Christ, much less ever be like it, you know, but it's not possible to be like it. That kind you of feel thing. like it's a lost cause. Yeah, that kind of thing. Like <laughs> trying you, and never get there. You're born a sinner. You'll never be anything else. But by grace, are you saved uh, through the love of God and just accept that you'll never be as good as Jesus. Mm -hmm. Bottom line, <laughs> that kind of thing, the, the unworthiness of God's grace and love and all of that stuff was yeah. the misperception. So I, that's what I, and I believe that about myself, that I was broken, imperfect, and a, a, a um, what do you call it? Um, unworthy child of God, unworthy of God's love, but I was lucky to get God's love. And so I carried that around. Um, and, and that was the misperception that eventually I had a break, uh, a complete breakdown in uh, college. I had gone to West Point Military Academy, uh, uh, went there and had a hard time, transferred to Morehouse College, which my, was my second choice. My dad had gone, my, my greatest hero, MLK, had gone, lost my scholarship the, that second year. <laughs> then I started putting myself through school, and I, I went homeless for a while. I was sleeping and in, sneaking into the dorms to sleep, and then I finally got a job as the student um, liaison for the cafeteria, so I was using that money to feed myself, put myself and finally got back on my feet. Then I had a wow. mental breakdown. Actually, before I got back on my feet, I had the mental breakdown. Um, it was over religion. I had partaken in some uh, um, plant like medicine, let's just call ayahuasca it. Ayahuasca kind of thing? No, no, uh, oh. marijuana. So oh. uh, on a, on, right after our college break, one of the guys brings it from Jamaica and Mm -hmm. It was my first time doing it, and I had a freaking out-of-body experience. I was in the love of God. I was the love of God looking down on my body, feeling both my body and the love, this unconditional love I'd never Whoa. felt. It was powerful. Nobody else had an experience like that. <laughs> from, like, from marijuana? I yeah, I'm like, why did I react that way? So I didn't touch it after that, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
the journey that there was meant to be, right? No, it was. The journey there was actually becoming aware of all the guilt and shame in my body, physically feeling it, how it was stored in my, in my, whether it was my etheric body or emotional body or all of them. It was, it was driving me nuts. I wanted to end my life. And um, I finally got to that point where I ended up outside of the body in that love. And it was powerful. Two weeks after that is when I had the breakdown, when a guy was asking me, um, hey, man, how do you know it's true about the Bible? Because I was telling him, you know, I got to get my, because of that experience with the marijuana, it's like, I think I need to get my life right. I think God's yeah. trying to tell me something. I got to go back to the Bible, stop doing this, that, and the other, and, you know, change my ways. He's like, but how do you know that stuff is true? And over and over asked me, and I tried to answer, and he'd ask me more critically in a way that made me think. It's the first time anyone had ever really made me reflect and become self-aware of what I was saying, getting out of the conditioned thinking, and suddenly realize I really didn't know. It was the mm -hmm. first time I'd ever realized that. I mean, it was like, boom. In that moment, I felt like the rug was pulled from under my feet. My mind just went, Phew. Wow. and I felt like I could hear and feel everything. It was the craziest thing. And I freaked me out. I started panicking. My heart, I felt like I just smoked weed again. Did I, <laughs> I just like, die? <laughs> yeah. like, oh my God, I'm having, a, I'm having that same feeling I was having when I smoked the stuff. It's like, oh, I gotta go to, I gotta go, man. I gotta go. I ran out, went to the lobby and I just sat down in the floor and just rocked back and forth saying, Jesus, 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 praying because I didn't know what to do. Then I heard something deep within. Uh, it wasn't a voice but it was like this knowing coming from my gut. It was the in most interesting thing. It was the only clear thing that was coming through telling me to go to the, uh, the nurse on campus. Okay. And, you know, I'm panicking, I'm paranoid, and I'm, it's like I'm feeling and sensing everything. I'm like, what is going on? And so I get up and I do it and I'm, you know, walk. I remember walking to the nurse's station outside and people going about their lives. And I've, I am consciously aware that I have lost my mind watching myself walk to this nursing station, trying to act like I'm holding it together. It was the craziest thing. Then wow. she, she gets me to the psychologist there. They get me to call my mom. I'm boohooing. My mom convinces me it's okay. Go ahead and sign myself into this uh, medical ward, uh, Grady Medical Center for psych ward. For seven wow. days, I spent, spent seven days in the psych ward um, getting things back together, met wonderful people, uh, uh, Dracula's wife, uh, guy Wait, what? Yeah, yeah. Dracula's wife was there. <laughs> That's what she said. Anyway. Okay, you gotta explain <laughs> that a little bit now. <laughs> so, yeah, she believed. She truly believed she was Dracula's wife. That's why I said. <laughs> oh, so it was another patient that another said she patient. Was Dracula. Exactly. Okay, I was gonna. Yes. <laughs> that was a joke. Sorry, that was. <laughs> I didn't clarify or set it up that way. Well. <laughs> but uh, but guy who uh, he had full blown HIV he was struggling with that. He was telling about his story. Met so many people there, and um, at the end, uh, the doctor, when he schedules me to release, he goes, John. Uh, so you've had a mental breakdown. I'm like, okay, yeah, I gathered that much. Well, what else can you tell me? So you need to stay away from stress. <laughs> I'm like, he's like, we're going to, uh, we're going to release you to family and we want you to do your best to stay away from stress. I'm like, okay, is there anything else? He's like, that's it. You, you just got it. You just had a mental breakdown, you full mental breakdown. And it's like, so nothing's wrong with me. I don't have like a mental uh, craziness. Why the heck was I, you know, experience what I'm experiencing? He's like, we, we don't see anything else. That's it. So I was, you know, part of me was grateful that I wasn't like insane, but part of me knew I had lost something during that time. I was observing and feeling so much. It just didn't feel right. It, or, or normal, I mean, it was well, like not right or wrong, but it was just, it wasn't the norm. Major but, shift. Bingo was not what I was familiar with at all. Um, and so uh, for, for, by the time I was released, I was kind of back to this place of, okay, of, of normalcy or familiarity and dealing with the world and what I could sense. Functional. However, <laughs> say again? Yeah, functional. functional. <laughs> However, I was finally shaken awake from my misperception of life. I, I now knew I didn't know for the first time in my life. I now knew I needed to seek something else other than what I'd been holding on to because that didn't work. It broke apart and I finally saw through it, right? And I, I even, it took me years and 
decades actually to realize what had actually happened that what i had experienced what that was, was expanding beyond the body i knew i could recall and knew it but something didn't click like wait a minute i was the energy outside of the body simultaneously being in the body that was so and i was observing myself it like came back to me that way so like an well, out of body experience is that what you're you know talking about? i think it was in and out of the body because i because i felt everything that was in the body mm -hmm. and i felt everything around the body and i was viewing the body at the same time very hard to explain i don't you know mm -hmm. all i know is it was it don't i've experienced things similar since then um in ceremonies and different things like that i have yet to experience something like that just through a, well, no, that's not true. I've also experienced it through breath work. Um, um, so so you, you've been able to willfully do that now, correct or no? I'll or, be honest, I wasn't intending it any of the times to do any of it. <laughs> My intention was to see what would happen, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Except for the time when I was getting questioned, but but even with the the herb, marijuana, I, I didn't intend. Well, that seemed more like a ayahuasca experience, your marijuana experience. So the way, the way that me sacred medicine hit me was exactly how it needed to, because it, it, it was a spiritual awakening. Like it, it did things that other people say it shouldn't do and all this other stuff, but whatever. Um, what I, I even in my search to find out what was going on with me after that, mm -hmm. I got brain tests and all this stuff to find out my brain was equally polarized yeah and i used both sides of the brain equally right. without having bipolar without having like the negative symptoms right uh -huh. but i was i was having mood swings but not you know like manic depressive and all that stuff though it was i don't know if that activated both sides of my brain or if it had already been activated i just became i, I couldn't say because my personality didn't change that much at mm -hmm. that time but the limitations i had and the locked in denial and perceptions of myself I had changed. And so that was a way of awakening part one. You got something to say? So I was just going to say, does that have something to do with, um, it's more of you kind of learning what your ego is and that it's something that needs to be let go of. Yeah. It um, because the ego is bringing, all of your beliefs in a package and you're like that package isn't working for me i've got to let go of this ego and the beliefs that came with it and kind of start from scratch so yeah yes and yes um Yay, so, ding, ding, ding. But, you know, <laughs> and the the way i hear it is uh the ego is often described as limited condition thinking Mm -hmm. right just limited condition it's this wonderful collection of limited condition thinking and we limit it and we hold it as true and we constrain our whole perspective and vision to that and it creates all this suffering and blocks to all the wonderful possibilities because we've limited it to this it's got to be this way and i'm just going to look at it this way and and we're misperceiving the possibilities and struggling and creating all sorts of uh, uh discomfort and misery and <laughs> suffering for ourselves but that misery is is noble that misery is not any better than bliss it's it a still is an experience bliss. and yeah it's still teaching you what it feels like mm -hmm. so when, at some point it's relative that misery can feel better than where you were that's why some people it's good for them to grieve it's good for them to move into anger it's good so it, it's all relative to where we are what's going to serve us best. That's why the, the phrase is, if it no longer serves you. At some point, it served you. That's why you chose it, <laughs> you know? Relative yes. to when you were powerless and you were trying to fight against the powerlessness, anger may serve you to move into that space so you actually move into claiming some inner power. So when we get stuck, when we don't process and allow that stuff to shift and take its normal co course and instead we misperceive and start making these limited conditioned ways of viewing or thinking and concluding about our experience that get in the way and that's what i had done growing up you know not having the father thinking i'm unworthy thinking all these things about myself and thinking i've got to do it this way at one point that served me it taught me faith i experienced it, i tried but i got stuck there and when life was telling me and all my impulses and everything was telling me i was 
I had been conditioned and learned to judge that, call it wrong, beat it out of myself, and, and create all sorts of suffering mm. for myself. I mean, just all kinds of suffering, you know, and dishonesty. Like I would hide who I was. I would hide what was going on inside. I'd pretend all this stuff, man. It was just, it was hell. It was really hell on earth. Um, but all in the mind. No, no one else was creating it but me. Um, so I was freed from that. And uh, as you said, that ego. But once I began to let that go, I could see new layers of how am I misperceiving, new layers of how am I limiting and keep letting that go. So that's what happened next. You had a question? or a So basically what you really kind of did was you were inspecting yourself. You know, like you, you didn't just um except what was happening you were dissecting it and trying to figure it out because you knew where you wanted to go you yeah. you you had a a height a, a you didn't know how far but you knew what you were now wasn't what you wanted to be and you knew you wanted to be something else yes. and then with this when this happened of course it's something different than anybody else's experience you never heard anybody talk about it in your yeah. circle and so you're thinking what's wrong with me <laughs> it's very lonely it, it's a very so, lonely place to be yeah the irony is i would never have imagined other people were going through the same thing yes. and have gone through and had gone through before i went through you know what i'm saying like i would never imagine these types of uh, breakthroughs some people call it a breakdown i like to look at it as a breakthrough your awakening uh, yeah this this you're breaking through the nonsense through the the limitation and suddenly realizing holy crap i had also done a lot of uh so just to finish that journey or part of the journey mm -hmm. from there i begin to seek again i begin to look for something else and i went i went to like hyper religion from studying the bible and praying every day because i went back to the bible funny enough and trying to really get the essence of it and say, maybe I need to be more dedicated. <laughs> but three years, every day, I'm studying the Bible, I'm praying, I'm sharing it with others, I'm doing all this stuff, very um, disciplined. So it taught me the discipline, the willpower, and I would pray earnestly, like go out to the fields at night, in the morning, during the afternoon, wherever. And I had some wonderful experiences. I had this one experience where I was out at the beach praying to God. It's like, show me your blah, 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 blah. Uh, what I thought was God, all of a sudden, I kid you not, my consciousness, now this was, this was no, I wasn't on anything, wasn't doing breath work, it was pure prayer, my consciousness, it was like my awareness started to come out of my head and expand into the sky, and I was like, holy crap, I pulled it back, I was like, oh, no, 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 don't show me that, <laughs> it was the craziest thing, man, so it was like I had this earnest yearning for expansion and to know the, the divine, but when the divine would try to show me, I'd get afraid and pull back. <laughs> like, am I dying? Uh, yeah. What's happening? Because you don't know what's, right. it's like, it's like you're exploring this territory that no one's really told you about. No one's really explained to you that um, in your search for God and the divine, that God and divine is you. And you're, you've been limiting yourself to this body vessel and this misperception of you, but even Jesus taught it. The beautiful thing is it came full circle around. Now, when I look at the Bible and all that time I spent studying the Bible and practicing it, even growing up, I see it from such a different, different perspective place. because it's no longer limited or mm -hmm. misperceiving the way I used to misperceive. I'm not saying I don't misperceive at all, of course, but I'm saying now I've expanded and these I, and I've had the experiences to show it everything from the transcendental peace to the oneness. I've experienced the oneness now. I understand um, what it means to ha come into that light. Like the same thing that happened to Paul, where he was overcome by the white light and all the love and all of that. That happened to me, right? Other right. people have explained the same thing. Um, yeah. What What it's taught me now is whatever that divine love and intelligence power is is us. And it's mm -hmm. operating as all of us. We're all it. But it's like layers of consciousness, right? It's like that the highest layer, it's, it's the recognition that there really is nothing at all. And we're all one. It's, then the next layer is down. It's like there's these creators things. And then, you know, it's just all this. Even in the Bible, it talks about Elohim, uh, them. They decided. Elohim is then they decided to create, right? Yeah. <laughs> so there's right. all these interesting things that you see even in the scriptures. 
Um, but what I've learned is to go and listen to, thanks to this path, connect with that spirit. Jesus taught it, the spirit that teaches all things and will remind you of what I taught. That's what he told his guys to go to. There was no Bible back then of the New Testament that he was passing around. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Quote yeah. you know, they didn't right. have that. He said, no. look, here's what, we're, here's what you got. The mm -hmm. kingdom of God is within. That kingdom resides within you. And there is a spirit that will be sent to you, God's spirit that is within you to teach you all things. Get to that. <laughs> Let that guide you. Even the Old Testament taught the same thing. Acknowledge the I am and the I am will guide you and direct your path uh, so, uh, in all your ways, right? So I began to finally come back around to that and it led me to what people call channeling now. Mm -hmm. To me, it was what Jesus was doing because he said, uh, I am the Father one. The words that I speak to you are not my own. I say how it the way the Father tells me to say it. So he was channeling. Straight channeling the I am. Now, he called it Father. I kid you not. The I am, the way it speaks to me is Father. Same freaking way. It was a beautiful thing. And what a perfect freaking way for love and divine intelligence to show up for one who grew up without a father, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the healing I experienced in connecting with that source and it presenting itself that way to me was, I can't tell you how healing it, it's just such a beautiful thing that I've never gone without a father. It's like just so healing. So I have no uh, challenge with that anymore. I, I, I just, I feel very blessed and grateful for that healing of coming to know the I am within that represent itself as a father. The beautiful thing is it will represent itself as exactly what you need. <laughs> That's why I don't judge anybody when they call it mother, when they call it whatever they want, right? When whatever they call works it, for you. When yeah. they call it you, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like, whatever, man. The, uh, who, who am I to take anyone from the path that shows them God's love, the I am's love? It's not Absolutely. my job. Let them have whatever works for them. And I, I just share whatever works for me. If it doesn't work for somebody else, that's okay. But it's so ironic that the way I was, um, I feel grateful the way I was brought up that it came so full circle, wasn't it an accident? And I believe that's for most people. I believe most people, the way they come into this world is a design that they, they get to learn all this stuff. And at first it feels like limitations, but then it, full circle, if they allow it, they begin to see the perfection in it. So you can see the perfection in everything from sexual abuse. I had that in my life to uh, all kinds of stuff. I, I, I finally come around to see the gift and the perfection in it all. And I'm so grateful for that. Sound might sound extreme, but I just from what the love and the intelligence has been guiding and showing me, like everybody has that opportunity. Not everybody will take that path, but there, right. nothing separates us from that love, not murder, not the, the most evil, wicked thing you can think of is really an illusion <laughs> that, you, that, that you allow to separate you in your own mind from that loving intelligence, but it doesn't, doesn't separate. And even the thing that you, project that quote evil onto is actually your consciousness and the divine showing up in some new way to teach you some lesson and show you some aspect of the meaning you're creating right <laughs> so right it's very fascinating how it all works but all that to say the journey took me to finally going within getting that healing um and continuing on this journey to align with that source of the knowing with that source of love, that source of intelligence that we are. And now I've found many ways where I've been following that guidance to fulfill what's called the soul's blueprint, my soul's blueprint, why I came here, what roles I'm to play in this phase of my life, what creations I'm to bring through, um, how I'm to serve others. And my whole life now is about service, um, and it, but it fulfills me. It's not service in some laborious Oh my God, I got to get up and make the kids breakfast. It's exciting. <laughs> it's, you know, and, and that's what a lot of my guests that on the show have, you know, come to be like in the end, it's like, you just want everybody to feel this way. Yeah. To be living their purpose. And it, uh, <clears throat> so the other thing I recognize is it's phases. Like our purpose at times is to go through the hell 
Yeah. At times it is to go through the confusion. At times it is to go through the breakthrough. At times it is to go through the seeking. At times it is to go through the aha moments. And you know, it's cyclical too. You it keeps going and going and going and you hit Enjoy something next, right? Yeah, There's always level some new level out up. Bingo. <laughs> You play um, video games with your kids. <laughs> bingo, yes. <laughs> Go to the next level. That, that time it. to level up. <laughs> That's it. That's it. And the the joy that I'm learning is it's it truly is one of these like when, with the soul's blueprint, it's really at our highest level, our own creation. It's not like, okay, uh you got to live out something, something aside from you created. No, <laughs> it's like, okay, you forgot on purpose what you designed to came here to do. And now you're remembering, now you're discovering, now you're uh, receiving that. And in some cases, that doesn't look the way somebody else might think it should look. In a lot of cases, actually, it right. does, it's going to look however it needs to look for you. And you can't even mess it up. Like no. even I remember asking about stuff like suicide and what about the people who come in? Like, what about the people who come in and they've got some sort of brain uh, disability? That, no, that's part of the design. Well, isn't that kind of like the the soul contract thing? Is that perhaps what you're I, talking about? I never hear it that way. It could be the way I hear it is soul's blueprint, but it may be the exact same as soul's contract. I don't know. Kind of like uh, this is what you're going to do when you're there. Like, yes. This is what so your that would plans be plans are. Yeah. Same thing. You know, that would be different. yes. Same thing. Ways. The other thing I I've learned is people who tap in hear it different ways. Like there's different language for it. For like akashic record. There's uh, they said like when I tap in, I don't hear it that way, but I hear the same stuff. Mm -hmm. Like uh, people who have tapped in and downloaded uh, prana and chi and th to me it's it's different language for aspects of the same thing and different perspectives. The way I hear it is source energy. Source energy shows up in all ways. Like all of it is source energy, right? And so, mm -hmm. so I get this more universal overarching thing. Uh, and then uh, it, it's like this, I don't know. For me, it's this big picture because even though I like some level of complex complexity, I like simplicity and ease as mm -hmm. much as possible. And so that's been um, a, a grace for me. Uh, you could almost say that simplicity and ease for me is like the basics. Like I'm still mastering the basics. And then once I get the basics, I can get into that complexity, <laughs> you know? But it's like, I'm, I'm really learning mastery of the basics of alignment, mastery mm -hmm. of the basics of um, receiving inspiration and acting on inspiration, mastering that. Mastering, allowing. Yeah, allowing, la mastering, letting go. Like that's my school. That's where I'm, um, become a, a great master teacher at because I'm a freaking student of it. <laughs> I'm practicing it every day and, you know, learning to master it, you know, consciously instead of, uh, and making it very natural instead of, um, and it, I say that kind of, uh, tongue in cheek, a master of it because I keep having to learn. <laughs> like I, it, the, the irony is once I don't have to learn it anymore, I will have completed it in, expanded into this other level but i'm still teaching this because i'm still mastering it if that because makes the sense because the, the 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 teacher is actually the student yeah exactly right? you teach what you, you what you most need to embrace and integrate with and so right that, so um so that alignment that trust and surrender that letting go um that's been my practice that's what i'm getting better and better at and expanding and, t and sh share with others and it's changed. That's really what's changed, transformed my life. That alignment, that allowing and letting go and following through on inspired action. It's like that combination has been, um, yeah, revolutionary for me. And it's, it's taken down some of my barriers, my blocks, the, or, or let me rephrase it, help me let go of those things and learn to trust those expansive experiences now that come my way without pulling back as much. Now, I've had some experiences that I still was shocked to find I was afraid of, you know, like just expanding it and, you know, that love and that, that intelligence is gentle enough and firm enough at the same time to give me exactly what I need to help me on that journey. So it's been, been a very 
grace is still a word I like to use because <laughs> I feel like, man, how blessed. I feel so grateful and blessed to have gone the path I've gone. Even I broke my, le- my ankle recently. Yeah. The worst pain I'd ever experienced. And it taught me how to tap into the power to transcend resistance to pain. Not wow. to make pain go away, but to stop suffering through the pain. Mm. And I, I mm. really found that power. And I was just like, I'm so grateful for the experience. It was hard. It was but, just like a little you know, lesson. Here, that try this now. And you're like, great, I could have done without that. And I was even following the guidance when I broke it. And, the, and I knew it was divine. I even reset it myself right in that moment when I broke it. I know you were talking you know? about that. The yeah. doctors were like, you did this yourself. Yeah, they were shocked. And they x-rayed and they're like, wow, it's nearly perfect. Just a little space over here and that's it, you know? So I didn't have to reset it. But it, what it showed me was you can trust life. Mm-hmm. because in that aligned state, I knew I was supposed to do what I did when I broke it. I knew I was in the right place when I broke it. I was afraid, don't get me wrong, and I was in pain, don't get me wrong, but it taught me how to go within and transcend the pain. It taught me all sorts of things. Not, I didn't master it, but I saw it was possible and that I can do it, and I, you know, I'm doing it more and more and applying it more and more, but that wonderful journey and i think all of our journeys can be the opportunity to change our perspective and go within and connect with that source that can show us a different vision a different perception of what has happened to us heretofore has actually been what has happened for us and what's to come is within our power to co-create with our higher selves and not this limited perception of who we think we are Right. Then when we're doing that, we're no longer grasping at these external uh, ideas, concepts, and uh, misperceptions of what we think we're supposed to be doing here. We're actually mm-hmm. surrendering to that higher will of ourself, that higher will of knowing that knows what we're here to do, knows our soul's blueprint, knows the design. Most people call it God in the U.S., right? So the will of God, if you want to, surrendering to the will of God, not my limited misperception of a will, but thy will, right? Mm -hmm. When we begin to line with that, it begins to flow and show us the grace, the love, the benefits of surrender. Opportunities Opportunities. that maybe we would have shied from before, right? That's a big one. Opportunity, huge one, because that's Mm -hmm. the, most of us limit ourselves from stepping into opportunities because we're still holding on to this old baggage of what we think we are unworthiness uh whatever it is i'm 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 even being called to expand this to something new i've 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 gone from a young man living in uh tennessee playing the role of victim and uh religious kid in denial (laughs) right and feeling like a big sinner and all this to speaking at spiritual centers to writing book with Marianne Williamson and my wife, by the way, uh, writing a book, uh, a current book that downloaded that's helping people. People, Ricky Byers, if you know who she is, new thought, awesome singer. She was just reading from the book recently. We've become friends. It's like all these cool things. I never would have expected how my life is being used as this vehicle for the I am to help other people realize they are the same. Yeah. They have this wonderful destiny, this wonderful blueprint for their own lives. And that when they tune into it, they become the love and the light that they truly are. Not this misperception of darkness and sin and all this other crazy stuff, right? So, right. So it's been, uh, so I feel blessed that that's been the, uh, my songs, my uh, writings, my teaching, uh, my practices, my life. My my wife and I have a podcast. we you know, we're, our, our life is dedicated to bringing, um, you know, just that expansion, that alignment into people's lives. So they're empowered instead of being disempowered. And like you said, they can see the opportunities for their lives because it's always yes. <laughs> That's, at the end of the day, it is always yes. It's yeah. just we misperceive what we're really after. <laughs> well, and I think, too, um, if you can really tap into that alignment you're in in, 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 a lot of people call it intuition your gut your a knowing a feeling um if you really practice that and start to follow it and act on those nudges right then you're going to get strength in that correct that's it yeah but it but it does not going to show you fear 
the fear comes from your beliefs. So if your fear comes up, it's like, what belief is not serving me? You know, fear is supposed to protect you from danger. Yeah. But it, we really don't have a lot of dangerous situations that we are mostly afraid of. We're afraid of success or afraid of failing or afraid of trying something new or changing Here's a one. job or moving or, you know, changing their anything. Um, Here's what your listeners might relate to actually a, a fear that I encountered recently come back up and resurface and how I dealt with it. So things have been so good uh, uh, financially in, in the midst of a pandemic, um, my family, my, my life, even breaking my, ankle was a blessing i mean like i got i received so much from it through it just across the board and it's been so good and so i've been so blessed in seeing life in this way that i begin to all of a sudden this old fear begin to rise up oh crap when is the other shoe gonna drop right it's been too rid- good <laughs> yeah it's too good something bad's gonna happen type of mentality like it's oh my god <laughs> now this happened um after taking my son, I was so abundant, feeling so good. And I decided to gift my son this new $200 skateboard because he wanted to skate. Took him out to the skating thing. We got it. The next day, I was listening to the spirit asking, should I go skate with them somewhere? Got to know. So they didn't go. Then they changed their plans. They were going to a local skate park. And I asked, should I go to that? And I got a yes. Went with them. Uh, they were. He was learning this new drop-in thing. Long story short, I I. I do this most of the time and ask spirit, should I do this? Is it best and highest for all concerned for me to do this? Kept getting yes, did it the first time, fell off, asked again, should I do it? Got a yes, did it again, crack, broke it, right? <laughs> so even in-, in You're like, wait a minute, you said I my could. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So even in that in- instance, it was one of these things like, I, I didn't mistrust it though. I didn't second guess it. I knew- holy crap, I guess this is part of what I'm supposed to experience, right? Well, maybe that was just the right situation to break your ankle Bingo. in a way that they wanted you to break it so that you could experience what you needed to experience at that time. And, and the whole journey has been learning surrender, learning uh, transcending pain, learning how to ask for help, learning to receive help, mm-hmm. because I became what I felt like I mean, even crying to my wife, just telling baby, I feel like such a burden to you. I just, it was, it was the most uh, humbling feeling, but I was so afraid of being a burden. I was so afraid of just like, you know, like I couldn't do anything for myself. It was ridiculous. Right? <laughs> so I re- it was the healing of, no, of to receive that kind of love and being taken care of and that humbling a situation where you know I'd been the strong guy and doing this and doing that now I, I can't even get to the bathroom without help <laughs> and appreciate be- for when you are able-bodied yes that appreciation as well and um so that whole trigger subconsciously I had this idea that oh crap things are going so good maybe something like that's gonna happen again <laughs> where I gotta go through this thing I don't want to happen that was the fear like, oh my God, I got to go through another lesson coming up soon because I'm feeling so good. Last time I felt this good, I broke my ankle, <laughs> you know? No, I gotta gonna now. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, oh boy. Good. So all of a sudden that pattern, I used to have a long time ago. So it was just resurfacing because of recent events. And I would, so I had to take that fear and I had to, uh, I couldn't suppress it. I couldn't push it or beat it into submission and all of that. I've learned that doesn't work. That makes you more miserable and mm-hmm. it just keeps growing and keeps fighting. It just persists in, in ways that make you suffer even more. So adding resistance on top of that resistance, not a good combination. So I began to just align, allow, let go. Something I've been doing for over a decade and teaching other people to do, right? And I would be with it and I would listen And then I do this stream of consciousness writing. Sometimes I do just straight talking channeling. Mm, But if I mm want to remember it for later, I'll write it out, right? Yeah. So I let the knowing come through and I just write it down. And uh, the knowing in that time was, um, what was it? I I could look it up real quick, but I think it's better to remember. Yeah. So it was just reminding me that in essence, that pattern is a representation of all consciousness. And 
just a micro reflection of all of my consciousness, meaning the, the universe's consciousness and something we have created has a meaning, a level of meaning, right? Mm -hmm. Just an idea, thought, and level of meaning. And it's not good or bad. The reality is I was resonating with what was resurfacing in the collective on yeah. planet Earth with humanity of all this fear of what's to happen and this, that, and the other. Yes. And so yeah. that, part of, that part of me that was still triggered and that, uh, that I had that old pattern, I used to invest a lot of belief in that, mm -hmm. in the resurface for me to look at. So two things, when higher frequency comes in, this is what I was being reminded of, when higher frequency comes in, we begin to embody that, everything that doesn't look like it rises to the surface to be seen. In yeah, movies. the contrast is really right. visible, isn't it? But it's like if you bring light into a room, you can see everything, right? Mm -hmm. As we're bringing the higher frequencies in, it brings the lower frequencies into awareness, but not for subjugation, oppression, or destruction, for integration. Integration means acceptance. We begin to accept that as our consciousness, not judge it. We begin to accept that as our consciousness, have compassion for those who are still believing in that, yet we no longer invest our energy in believing in it. We're not right. trying to fix it. We're not trying to eradicate it. We become compassionate to understand, ah, this is the story I've been telling myself, mm -hmm. but I don't have to keep choosing that. When that yes. clicked, because it, it had been happening for like three or four days in a row. I was more and more aware of it. And I'm doing all my practices to be with it and figure out how to fix it. And finally, the download comes and says, you don't need to fix it. All you really got to do is let it go. <laughs> all you really got to do is take your focus here, realize you don't have to believe that, and choose this. Oh, choose differently. Yes. It can be anything, right? You it, know, can be it's, anything. it can be anything. And... We yeah. often, go ahead, you first. No, I was just going to say, um, you know, what you were talking about, like seeing the contrast come up, but we're in a different place where it's more of like a duck with, with the water. It just rolls off and you're not taking it in and absorbing it and, and having that belief affect you or that situation affect you. It's, it's almost like you're in observation mode. That, yes. And we're actually transcending uh, the idea that it can, it can even affect us, right? Right. Like we, we suddenly transcend the, the idea that there's any wrong or right about it. It's more of a, wow, all this time I've been associating and identifying with this thing that keeps coming up and I have this charge around it within me because I'm investing belief in it. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let me access this higher level of knowing. And it sort of just brings the aha that, oh, just all you got to do is let go. Let me give you another example. Letting go sometimes is the problem for us, right? Yes. Like, how do I let go? Well, letting go is pretty damn easy. Open your hand, let go, right? If you're holding something, <laughs> it works same energetically. Open up, let it go. Why is it so challenging for us? often we don't sub we don't understand or aren't aware of the subconscious attachment and desire to experience what we think we don't want to experience like we don't realize some of us love suffering we, then we they don't have anything to talk about if you don't right <laughs> it's like who would have known we love to suffer oh <laughs> we love to suffer we wouldn't choose suffering we choose mm -hmm. it subconsciously because we're not aware that's what we want. <laughs> and you're the, attracting it to you, yes, yourself as well. It's, we've, we've miscreated so many things energetically, but it's not just in this, as you probably were, not just mm -hmm. in this lifetime. It's not mm -hmm. just in this, uh, my individuated journey. It's the collective. We're not mm -hmm. separate from any of it. So right. oftentimes we've come into this lifetime in our soul's blueprint to experience and expand what it feel, on what it feels like to have these misperceptions and then begin to grow what it feels like to forget i am the i am and then to know thyself as the i am right so we're creating this wonderful journey of contrast to experience it by design like it's not on accident 
Yeah. We, we, we love this suffering because we chose to experience it. That's yeah, why I was like, saying earlier. We're going to get out of this one. This is a lesson. And yeah. to learn. Hmm. It's like in the suffering, the crazy thing is the suffering is a noble teacher. As we said earlier, mm -hmm. it's not better than the aha of, oh, now I can let it go. No, you needed to even experience that to even appreciate letting it go and yeah. experiencing the what the illusion of the opposite the none of it's real yeah <laughs> yeah know? but it's well you know i guess the way i kind of my little analogy of this whole thing is like remember when you were a kid you were first allowed to watch a scary movie and it it it, it kind of like took you in for a few days like i remember watching the exorcist the first time and being scared to death three yes. days later i'm still <laughs> like affected yeah, yeah. by it and then yeah. you get to the point where you're just like, huh, that's just a scary movie. Exactly. And then, or you're just like, uh, I can turn it off, Shh, let it go. <laughs> or you get like Janice where you're laughing at it, right? Yeah, right? You're just like, <laughs> oh my God, look, okay, watch out. He's going to come through that door right now. And you're like, oh, yeah. I told you. Um, yeah, and it, you can look at it like that instead of just, oh, oh my gosh, you know, it, yeah. um, or something happens to somebody. Um, you know, you can see that that person needs, I mean, it, it's hard to say, but there's a lesson that maybe they are having to do right now, you know, yeah. or maybe they have uh, their blueprint is, or contract, so contract, some people think of it as soul contract, is to come in and do something that maybe could be horrible or happens to them that's horrible, but they planned on it. I mean, right. of course, when you're here, you're just like, you wish you hadn't, but you know, that's your, the bigger picture is that's what you wanted to experience. Or maybe you had um, made a contract with someone else that I'm going to be your mother and you're going to be my uh, daughter or son. And this is what's going to happen. And I'm going to learn this and you're going to learn this from this experience. Yeah. Yeah. So it sounds like soul's blueprint would encompass from the way I hear it, it encompasses all your lives. Like everything mm. you're, it's like this wonderful infinite thing that in this phase of your existence, this individuated point of awareness, you're playing these roles, going to experience this, that, and the other. And it sounds like there's contracts within that. I don't know. I haven't asked about that, but in this moment I'm feeling into it and getting, yeah, it's like, um, just to clarify, but so there's something you said about the lessons that um, I think is wonderful too. At different levels of consciousness, the lessons shift, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So more in that level of consciousness that believes in the separation, believes the body is real, doesn't even recognize there's something beyond this idea of who we are. When we're in that, the lessons are something else. And the things that happen are showing us certain things. Like, what does it feel like to believe this way? What does it feel like to feel you're separate from your good? You're separate mm -hmm. from money. You're unworthy, this, that, and the other, right? So it's all this amazing teachings and learning these lessons of what does it feel to believe this? It's then, like working out, right? Like, yeah, yeah. okay, I'm going to work out my biceps, but, and I'm going to work out my upper body. And I'm going to get my upper body all strong. Oh, well, now I've got to work my lower body. Oh, I haven't work those yet um, now i gotta do squats what that hurts yeah. you know but you've got you're strengthening that muscle you're yes. improving your muscle structure so it's just like your spiritual muscle you're learning different things right as That's you're right. as you're going along and you're like oh this came around this came up oh am i supposed to learn from this That's uh, it. it's not just yeah. one lesson right that's it. Um, and once you once you begin to expand from that separation level, you mm -hmm. begin to access this knowing that ah, I'm actually more than that. But you're not dreading it. You're not dreading that lesson. You're like, what's this? What's this mean? And oh. usually it's a result of the other level. The mm -hmm. other level is when when our I think of it like desire. When we desire to be at this level and attach to and identify with the physicality, that desire helps us grow the desire not to. In other words, the desire to expand because that desire leads to the suffering that teaches us what does it feel like to be limited? What does it feel like to be confined and powerless and 
at the behest of some power beyond you and not having control and all of that. Well, that desire to suddenly expand beyond that eclipses the desire to continue to suffer. Once that happens, we do what it takes to seek and find. And then we begin to find the things that work for us and it begins to expand us into learning how to align, learning how to access our power and expand our awareness beyond the limitations, beyond the limited thinking. Then we Level begin up. to access new levels of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And that's how we begin to access our genius and understand not only our soul's blueprint and what our roles are here, but we begin to listen to it and go to that thing we were talking about, the inspired action, following it and birthing the things we're here to birth that are of a higher frequency than the things that we were birthing at the lower levels of consciousness. Now, mm -hmm. doesn't mean that the low, they're any better. It just feels better because <laughs> at the lower level, it's suffering. At the higher level, it's liberation and relief. And you need both to create the contrast. You wouldn't even appreciate duality. it. Duality. You that. need the yeah. duality, right? It's all, yeah, it's, it's all. roses and butterflies all the time. It, they're going to get boring after a while. And then a little Amen. contrast comes in. You're like, oh, yeah, I do like r roses and butterflies <laughs> um, yes, after yes. all, right? <laughs> That's it, yeah. So, well, guys, um, yeah. This this has been amazing. Um, I May really, I leave you with one small hack? Yes, yes, yes. I was going to ask you that. It's it's actually, I, I thought I was going to share something else, but it's actually a framework. The oh. hack is a framework. I'll share the, the quote we talked about, but the hack okay. is actually the four levels of creation. This has been the best hack for me to understand the law of attraction. And the four mm -hmm. levels of creation, most of us know the primary level everything being that some people think energy but it's frequency and vibration mm -hmm. energy is composed of frequency and vibration the the more frequent the <laughs> vibration the higher yeah. the frequency right the slower the lower the frequency so right so that's the primary level the secondary level is sensation how we interact with that, those frequencies mm -hmm. so these are all levels of creation i'll explain the significance in a minute uh the third level is meaning the ideation, the thoughts, and the meaning we create around those experiences. And the fourth level is form, physicality, the world of form. When we think of manifesting, we often talk about that last level. In the world of form and physicality, this illusion of creation, I want to manifest this person, place, thing, situation, etc. right? Some people, when they're talking about manifesting, are talking about the level of sensation. I want to manifest this feeling. I want to manifest the feeling of space. Some people are talking about meaning. I want to create a new idea. I want the inspiration for this, that, and the other, right? All of them are undergirded with frequency. The reason mm -hmm. we want all of these things is frequency. Each of them are some collection of frequencies we've projected upon those things, whether it's the meaning, the sensation, uh, or the world of form, we're seeking frequency. Instant manifestation comes from recognizing the frequency is accessible without all of this. And, and all of these creations only amplify the frequency. So desire is in effect the low, the low amplification of the frequency being sought to amplify. In other words, if you have a desire, that is source itself saying, hey, tune in to this frequency right here. It is the seed itself. It's not that the desire is some separation. The desire is the frequency. It's just at a low volume or amplification. It's asking you to turn it up. And you can either do that by visualizing, by doing whatever, because you're not separate from that fulfillment. So you mm -hmm. fully feel the frequency and you give it to yourself. Or you can do it by going and getting the new car that you wanted. You're amplifying and choosing to fulfill that frequency by amplifying it but you're really doing it through projection. You think it's the thing, but it's not. Because if it was the thing, every time you had looked at or drove that, it would feel the exact same. But it changes because of the level of meaning we create, sensation, all that stuff. It, does, it never stays the same, right? <laughs> so no. these levels of creation, what it helps you see is most people are looking at, when they're thinking law of attraction, ooh, I want to manifest this A, B, or C, fill in the blank. I want to manifest this thing or this situation, or whatever it is, pick something. So your listeners, whatever it is, pick what you want to manifest in the external physical world. Mm -hmm. Now, 
When you clarify your intention, a lot of people think that means clarifying the thing. What I hear when I listen to spirit is you're dropping down in the levels of creation, clarifying what meaning are you giving it? Why? Why do you want it? Dropping down the sensation. What does it feel like? Then really embodying and amplifying the frequency itself so that you can fully feel or fulfill the desire. What does that mean? Fully feel the frequency. Like That's all like, that means. Like test driving a car, right? Bingo. Yeah, test, test How driving a car. What does it feel? Car. What does it feel like if I were wow. to have this car? Okay, I can pretend I own this car. I really don't, but yeah. what, this is what it's going to be like, right? And most um, people think that most people think that it's the thing that is giving the fulfillment because uh, we still operate at that lower level of consciousness that believes the things are the real mm -hmm. thing. But then that would mean you're separate from your good. Yeah, it's the feeling that you, you can't want have the car. in the end. Right, if you can't have the car, you're separate from your good. Mm -mm. That's why so many people feel so powerless and they don't understand instant manifestation and the real power comes from the frequency. That's why so many spiritual teachers say, own the treasure within like Jesus. The mm -hmm. kingdom of God is within. Store your treasures in that kingdom of mm -hmm. heaven within mm -hmm. yourself, not externally where it can be subject to harm and all of that. Yeah. The real kingdom is the level of frequency and the power you have to align and choose amplification there independent of the other levels. Now, once you do that and give it to yourself, you are fulfilled and you're bringing that fulfilled beingness to your doing and to your inspired action, no longer lacking something and perpetrating more suffering and separation so I can try to get something to fulfill. No, you're fulfilled. Now you're just amplifying the fulfillment. That's why right. more money... For this crowd, more money means more problems because <laughs> they're amplifying the problems within <laughs> the separation. For this crowd, it means more abundance and opportunity, right? It depends on how you're choosing, which path. So it's not, so long story short, those four levels of creation are my, uh, the hack I received to, uh, it's actually in my book, The Abundance Vibration, A Guide to Alignment, received over 21 days of downloads, um, as well as a few private sessions and a couple of retreats we led where I got group sessions. It all c came perfectly together as this one compilation to help us realize new frameworks of the same thing. It's, it's the same stuff, just brought in, uh, kind of like writing a song about love. Mm -hmm. I was inspired to write it this way in this genre, <laughs> right? But it's not like it's out there, but some people resonate with it more this way versus maybe a country song about love, you know? So right. it's my favorite flavor uh, that was supposed to come through me of the same wonderful message. Right. I mean, cause what you're saying as far as your vibration is what people are thinking of happiness, joy, euphoria, you know, that's a high vibration, right? So that's a free, yeah, those are frequencies and often we give them these names and labels. So it's actually me, a level of creation of meaning and frequency. Mm -hmm. And in essence, you can look at something like fear, Oh, I'm afraid to go and speak on stage. That's really a level of meaning and frequency. Frequency is kind mm -hmm. of neutral. It, it is then given this uh, charge based on the positive or negative or neutral perception level of meaning you create around it. That's why some people have learned that same energy can become excitement. It's the same energy if you shift the meaning around it. Mm -hmm. Perception, the level of meaning you're creating, right? It's the same frequencies can be experienced different ways. Or you can just say, okay, there's this energy. I'm not going to look at it as fear or uh, excitement. I'm going to stay in the middle and just see what it does, right? So there's so many ways to navigate it. Right. Um, but I, I'm just saying that to say... Um, when we're dealing with the frequencies, I by no means uh, have I, like I've seen um, this wonderful work, Power Versus Force, and I love the way he maps it out, but even that's, a, that's limiting, like that, that's not expansive, that's just a nice framework. A framework is a helpful guide that helps you conceptualize it so you can experience it, but mm -hmm. the framework isn't the thing, <laughs> just yeah. like the four levels of pointed out that's not the thing that's just the way to help you experience what is <laughs> right right and you know kind of like how i have the 
create happy now. It's kind of create vibration now, create it first. Exactly. Have it first. And then yes. everything else is your, your oyster, right? Seek ye first the kingdom of God in all its rightness. Then all these things shall follow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the things come once we've activated the kingdom within and chosen the consciousness and given it to ourselves. Those who do not have will have less. Those who have will have more. Choose it in within first and the rest mm -hmm. shall follow. So that's what I've learned. And it, it's through that practice. My favorite quote, align, allow, let go. It's the first thing I ever channeled. My angels, guys were bringing it through me, through my mouth, right? And it came out online. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> but I intuitively knew what to do. And I've been teaching that for uh, since 2008, uh, teaching that, sharing it with others. And it's a powerful, easy way to align with the source of who we are, um, allow that source energy to do in the intelligence, to do what it needs to, to remove our blocks and to let go so we can fully be used as the vehicles of our higher levels of consciousness that we are. Um, now, and expand our awareness into knowing and identifying with that versus this limited idea of ourselves. Now I give that meditation away um, through my Tri Harmony um, momentum. I call it morning momentum, but it's a Tri Harmony system. Okay. Essentially, it covers mind, body, and spirit, and I do it every morning. This is part of it. This tea you see me drinking is a, yeah. a wonderful concoction for the brain and the energy. Has MTC oil, has ginger, has Ooh. green tea, has uh, Ayurvedic herbs, has, um, oh, elderberry. I just added elderberry recently. Elderberry. <laughs> My mother yeah. used to make elderberry jelly. How about that? <laughs> I use the herb itself in, or the root, whatever it's called, the wow. berry dried, make this tea out of it. Um, you can also use English tea, but like that's one part of the morning routine. Mm -hmm. Also exercise is another part, meditations, the other part. And I give that a, a line, allow, let go, med guided meditation away as a free package. There's other parts in this too, as far as how to listen to spirit to help you prioritize your to-do list, like the very practical things. Okay. And a lot of what we talk about is this super expansive. The expanses of, is great so you can connect with the power and then you got to give it direction if you want to create. Right. <laughs> right? So right. the vision and the inspired action help give that expansion opportunity and creation into the world of form. So right. I show how to listen to spirit and go through this wonderful process that I learned um, that I've combined with alignment to actually prioritize and delegate and schedule things to help us balance how we're executing. So <laughs> because, all fun stuff. Because when, when you are really in alignment, it's, it's coming at you and you can get overwhelmed Yeah. because you're like, I, I want to do, I want to do, I want to do, I want to do. I have like, you know, all these ideas and this flow and you're just like, I can't do it all, you know? And so and you, that's you we, need the prioritization. That's it. Like, yeah. I can't do it. All the things you want me to do right now. We're catching up. Okay. <laughs> it's so easy to get, dis I, I call it getting distracted. Like uh, the reality is, what I found for me is when I'm in alignment, I flow with ease and do all of these things. It's when I get distracted and I'm looking at the old consciousness of limitation and the old ideas of how things are supposed to happen and what I'm not able to do and separation of what I have and don't. That's when, case in point, when I was first told I'm going to become a speaker, I don't do public speaking. You know, I was a, a dude who had a top 10 billboard single, toured the world with a rock band, you know, <laughs> went to West Point Military Academy, uh, left there and uh, lost my scholarships and all this crazy stuff. It's like, what am I going to talk about? Man, that was the secret ingredients right there. <laughs> it's like, I was perfectly designed to speak. I've gotten to speak to corporate CEOs, gotten to teach collaboration, gotten to teach spiritual things. I've learned so many things, uh, even across the world, right? Um, and share these different gifts, thinking that I wasn't able, but in reality, when we're in alignment, what happens, not only we get the inspiration, but if we stay in alignment, we just keep trusting being like, you know what? I don't know how this is going to go, but I see I'm going this way and here's the next step. And that's all I really know. And I'm flowing with it. When we get distracted, it's like, holy crap, you want me to do what? You want me to do this, 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 this? Wait, wait, wait. 
All I want you to do is see the vision and take it a step at a time. What's the next step now? Yeah. Not do it all at the same time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, I think because like when you're first learning to get in alignment, um, I think um, I've heard it described where when you get a download, it's like a smudge, you know, like, you know, like how you had know, the old typewriter and if it got yeah. stuck, you just like the same place over and over and over and you can't read it because it's just a lot of stuff. Yeah. And we have to realize we just have to see, okay, well that's the whole picture, but it doesn't mean we have to accomplish it all today. Bingo. That's it. And starting out, you, it's expansive. And like, we only get to see a little bit of it and it can feel overwhelming because we're not used to staying in that aligned state that not only sees the vision, but knows it's going to unfold the way it needs to unfold. We right. go back to this, this limited self, like in, in, but it's supposed to be that way. So it can expose what isn't matching this vision. Like we have to, what are we still holding on to that it, that believes it's limited and is somehow separate from this vision? Okay, mm -hmm. here's the vision. Here's the high frequency light. Ta-da, we turned mm -hmm. on the lights and now you can see everything that's not like it. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh God, that's me. I'm naked. <laughs> right. And now you're trying to figure out what to do, but it's really staying with the light looking back at the light and beginning to integrate those things and realize, wow, those things are actually the ingredients that have perfectly designed me to be the one to be led to the next step and the next right. step and the next step. And you're going to ask like, what's, what's the first thing I need to do? You Bingo. know, where do I That's go? It. And just That's follow it. those nudges, you know, as you get them. The experiences teaches you the trust because yes. that's, it's almost like the experience itself not only teaches you who you are, who God is, uh, undoes the limitations, et cetera, but also builds your will so you can keep choosing to align. It builds your faith and your trust. It builds the desire. It's so many things. It's like this perfect combination for everything. It's the fix all. <laughs> it is. It yeah. is. So yeah. how can the listeners um, access your, your meditation, your the Tri Harmony the system, tri -harmony. Is call it right. It's the morning s momentum system. So to get that Tri Harmony, all you've got to do go to JohnStringerInc.com. JohnStringerInc.com. I'll put that in the link down below in the show notes. There you go, and just simply sign up on the list. You'll get an automatic um, email that says, "Hey, sign up for here's the free Tri Harmony system," and it's all in units in a learning group in Facebook put it up there for simplicity's sake, okay. uh, offered it at New Year's actually going into 2020. <laughs> so it served a lot of people since then. Yeah. And they can also, if they're interested in your book, right? Yep. You can get that on the website too, johnstringerinc.com. We're also going to, uh, I teach uh, how to, for song, aspiring songwriters, anyone who's ever wanted to learn how to write a song, I teach them how to take the same method and listen for the songs and let the songs come through mm. them. Um, and so that's called the, uh, we do, we've done four years of the conscious songwriting retreat. 2020, we had to suspend it because our hotel closed, of course. Yeah. Um, so now we're bringing it online. Um, so that'll also be an offering that'll be launched very that's soon. So check at johnstringerinc.com to stay in tune for that as well. And that one is lyrics writing or also writing the actual music? It's, it's whatever, whether you're a melody person, whether you're a lyricist, you can learn the both. And uh, if you're not an instrumentalist, that's cool. But if you are instrumentalist, we mm. have things for you as well to combine it all. Because um, mm. some people don't want to learn an instrument and aren't here to learn that. And all they need to do is learn how to tap in and get the song idea and go to someone who can produce it. Um, right. And then some people like me write it on an instrument. Um, yeah. So, Depends on you. If you're our, if you're somebody drawn to learning an instrument, we don't teach the instrument, but we teach you the practices to bring to the instrument when you're playing. Gotcha. If that makes sense. Yes. Total sense. Well, thank you so much, John, for joining us. Um, oh, it was a blessing. It, listening to you is always so inspirational and uplifting and soothing. And it, you know, just like everything's right when, <laughs> when you're talking. So I, I thank it. you so much for coming and thank I'd love you. to have you uh, uh, come back again in the future. Look forward you know, to it. 
sounds like we always have something to talk about. So I know, like <laughs> you and I could just get on and not even record, yeah, and talk for about an hour. About stuff. <laughs> you know? So, so that's but, awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll definitely be having you back again. Thank you. I look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Much love. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Create Happy Now podcast. If you liked today's episode, please subscribe, rate, and leave a comment on the additional topics that you would like to be featured on the Create Happy Now podcast. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Don't forget to sign up to be notified of the upcoming free training. If you are done with drama and done with feeling unfulfilled, done with life being a chain of disappointment and ready to have a life of zen where drama fades away things start to go your way inspiration becomes exciting abundance starts to show up effortlessly and you finally see a path a blueprint to follow then make sure you go down to the description below either on the podcast or the youtube channel depending on what you're on at this time and check out the link there and go get on the list so that you'll be notified when this free training will be coming out. Remember, again, it's only going to be open for a seven-day window. You'll have that seven days to listen to it before I will be taking it down. So be sure to get on that list today. Catch Create Happy Now on YouTube with podcast recordings and additional videos. Look out for Create Happy Now Facebook group, courses, books, and more. If you would like to stay on top of Create Happy Now creations, subscribe to the podcast and YouTube channel so you can start your journey to create happy now. You can also find Create Happy Now on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, Podbean, Stitcher, Deezer, Amazon Music, and iHeartRadio. 